How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video, except this time this Max MSP tutorial video is on Max for Live, so we are in Ableton. This has been a long time coming and a highly requested topic, so I am very excited to jump into this today. Let's just talk about it. Max for Live, if you don't know, is the entire Max MSP programming language built inside of Ableton. If you didn't know this also, Ableton was originally built as a bunch of Max MSP patches. That is right. The powerful music industry changing digital audio workspace used to be a bunch of Max patches, which is just incredible history. And I'm very excited to tell people that all the time. With that and all that knowledge, let's just jump right into it, shall we? First things first. Once you click on the Max for Live tab inside Ableton, you will see there's three categories here. We have a Max MIDI effect, a Max instrument, and a Max audio effect. Which one you pick will depend on what you want because each one has a different starting template to work with. If you click on the drop down arrow, you'll see there is this plugin for the Max MIDI effect. You can just click and drag that anywhere into the blank space. And you'll see with the max MIDI effect, we get a MIDI in object that is patched directly to a MIDI out object. So what this does is if you want MIDI in as your input and you want MIDI out as your output, this is the patch you're going to build. So maybe something like MIDI based arpeggiators and sequencers, those kinds of things where you want to output MIDI data this will be your starting spot. The second one is the Max Instrument, and same thing, if you just click the Max Instrument uh, plugin and drag and drop that into a blank space, you'll see with this, our starting template is MIDI in, and our output is plug out, which is the Ableton object version of Easy DAC. If you're familiar with doing audio stuff in Max MSP, plug out is the equivalent to Easy DAC. This is how we port audio to the rest of the Ableton environment. And so this template is what you would use if you're building a synthesizer where you want to be able to plug in MIDI notes, but you want an audio signal as your return. The last template that we're given is the max audio effect. And if you just click and drag and drop that in, you'll see we have the plug in object and the plug out object. So this is an audio signal to an audio signal. This is what you would want to use if you're trying to build like a reverb or a chorus or something that takes an audio signal and returns an audio signal. Three templates, pretty standard. You just got to pick the right one in your use case and what you're trying to build. For this tutorial example, we're going to go with the max instrument which is the MIDI in to audio signal out. And once you've dragged and dropped in the correct template that you want to use, you're going to go down to here and you're going to click this icon button. It's a rectangle inside circle. And once you click that, it may take a second to load on your end if you haven't had, if you don't have Max open already, but it's going to open what uh, may look very familiar to you. We have a Max programming window, but with the default Ableton layout. And inside this window, we can now do everything that we would normally do with Max MSP. That is all the audio stuff, all the video stuff, all of it is all contained within Max for Live as well. And we're just going to first talk about the layout of the Max window, and then we're gonna build something pretty cool. And we're gonna talk about some other Ableton quarks. But first things first, let's just look at what we have here. We have this device vertical limit, and you'll notice that everything that is above this line is what is showing up in our plugin window. If I just was to uh, double click here and create a bunch of random objects, and we were to save this as our untitled device example, and replace that and close out of the window, you'll see that all those objects we created above the device vertical limit are now being shown in our plugin window. And the plugin window has automatically resized to accommodate for all of that. If we click on the icon to open up the patching window again, uh, and we were to delete all of these objects and save, it will resize back to accommodate for whatever was left. So it's very important that you keep that in mind. Whatever you want shown in the final window needs to be above this device vertical limit. Anything below this line, all this code down here is not gonna show up in that window. However, we're also going to eventually talk about 
presentation mode in Ableton. And that's where this device vertical limit thing is going to come into play a lot more. We're just going to use that now so we can see what we're doing as we're experimenting with things. And we're gonna keep it really simple for this tutorial. We're just going to take some MIDI in and we are going to set that to our sine wave. So it's gonna, we're gonna basically going to build a sine wave synthesizer. And first, it helps to know what kind of data we're getting from our MIDI in objects. So I'm just going to patch the MIDI in outlet into the right inlet that of this message box. And what that's going to do, if you're not super familiar with how Max works, it's going to display whatever information is coming out of this patch cord, and it's going to display that in this message box. So I'm gonna save this patch real quick. We see our message box is in this display window and I'm just gonna hit some random keys on the keyboard. And you'll see uh, we're getting just the number 64 and 100. And what this is, the reason we're getting this and not like the actual MIDI value is because the MIDI in object is actually outputting every bit of data about MIDI that there could possibly be. So it's not just the MIDI pitch, the MIDI note, but it's also the velocity, the note on and off message, control change values, anything strange like that, it's all being output. So we only want to take the pitch value from the MIDI. And to do that, we're going to use the MIDI parse object. And you see it says interprets raw MIDI data. That is what we're getting out of this MIDI in is all that raw data. So if we just patch that MIDI in to our MIDI parse object and take a quick look at all these outlets, you'll see we are getting each an outlet for each bit of that data. This is our note on and off, so the pitch and velocity, and it says it comes as a list. We have poly key pressure, control change values, program change values, pitch bend value, MIDI channel, so MIDI event message, basically anything that could be MIDI is going to come out of one of these outlets. Like I said, we just want the pitch value, so we're gonna patch that outlet for the pitch value into the right inlet of our message box now. We're gonna save and close, go back to this window, and now you'll see when I click on the keys for this, you'll see we are now getting the MIDI value, the pitch MIDI value, and the note on and off velocity message as a list, which means just there are two integers together coming out at the same time. So that's perfect, that's great. That's exactly what we want. We're gonna open up the max patching window again, and we don't need both values right now. We only need that pitch value. So I am going to use the unpack object. What that does is it creates an outlet for everything defined in a list. In this case, we have two integers. So I'm using the I to stand for integer. And we only have two of them. So we only put two I's in the unpack object. And that gives us an outlet for each integer value. So the pitch value is going to come out of this left outlet because it was the first integer value in our list, and the velocity note on and off value is going to come out of this second one. But we only want the pitch for now, and we're gonna take that, and we're gonna patch it into this M2F object, which converts a MIDI note to a frequency value, which we can then patch into our cycle tilde object. This is a sine wave. If Again, if you're not super familiar with the max context, this tilde at the end of the name signifies that it will return an audio signal. So we're taking this frequency value, we're setting our cycle sine wave to oscillate at that frequency, and we're going to get that sine wave as an audio signal out from the cycle object. And you can see it's even a different color patch cord. And if we patch that into our plug out object, when we save this and we go to play some notes, we're now going to hear a sine wave at that pitch inside our Ableton patch. I was honestly just hitting random notes, but that was almost the Zelda melody, um, which is pretty funny. And yeah, there we go. We already have built our first Max for Live MIDI instrument. You have just created a sine wave synthesizer. And what it comes down to from here really is just the more you know about Max, the more you can continue to add to this. For example, if we don't want to use the, the gain slider to control the volume, 
but we want that to come with the patch, you can add something that will automate the volume, such as the line tilde object. And all you gotta do is multiply the output of your cycle object. We're actually gonna start at zero by the output of this line every time you hit a new MIDI note. So that would be something like one, zero, and how fast we want that to happen. And we'll take our MIDI value, we'll cheekily convert it to a bang by patching it into a button. It's not the most effective way to convert something to a bang, but it works for this example. Again, we're gonna save. And now when we hit a note, So it's not quite the effect I wanted, but uh, it is its own interesting effect in a way. Maybe you might like that. Something like that. Um, <laughs> Anyways, this is not about me trying to play the Zelda melody. This is about us learning Max for Live. So yeah, maybe you might like that effect and keep it and continue to build off of that. Again, really, it all comes down to what you know about Max MSP and trying to build that. So I would recommend watching a lot of my other tutorial videos um, to learn how to use Max MSP so that way you can carry that knowledge over into Max for Live or do anything I do in those videos in Max for Live and build your own Ableton devices. And once you have that set up, ready to go, there's just a few final things to go over in terms of getting things set up and finalized in Ableton. So once again, we're going to open our max patching window. And like I said, this is the device vertical limit, this line here, and everything that is above this line, all these objects, they're going to be visible as part of our max patch. Um, if you don't want all this code in there and that makes a lot of sense you only generally want to show the things that are important for controlling your patch there's this handy nifty feature called presentation mode if you just right click anywhere in the blank space of your max patch you're going to see <laughs> this inspector window tab and once you click on that and scroll all the way to the bottom of the all tab, there's gonna be this option under view for open and presentation. We're gonna check that box and we're gonna close that out now. And it kind of changed the look of this window. You noticed it got rid of our line. That's okay because our line is actually still there in the presentation mode view. If you click on this icon down here, this projection screen icon, it's going to change everything to presentation mode. And you'll notice our code disappeared, but our line came back. Presentation mode is showing only what you want to show, but you have to specify what you want to be in presentation mode as well. So let's create a number box. Um, I'm going to do that by pressing I on my keyboard, and I'm going to patch our MIDI value out to that number box. And then for fun, I'm also going to create a float number box and we're gonna take our uh, converted MIDI to frequency value and patch that into that. And we're going to highlight both of these and right click on one of them and you'll see there's this add to presentation option. If you click that, the objects will have this pink border around it. That will indicate to you that these objects are now included in presentation mode. So if we click on that presentation mode icon again, you'll see now those two boxes are the only two that are displayed. And we can actually, we can move these around, we can change the size of these if we wanted to and go back to our regular presentation mode. And other than the fact that I changed the size, Nothing about these changed. They're still in these original positions. These could have been, you know, all the way over here. It doesn't matter where where they're set in presentation mode will not affect where they are in the code. So this is really helpful because that lets you um, easily add only the important objects. When you have, you know, like tons of objects all over the place doing all sorts of things, 
you only want you don't want to move those objects around to show what is necessary you can just quickly add those to presentation mode and then rebuild your patch however you want it to look with whatever things you want in here and it's not going to affect your code at all which is perfect that's nice we can we can use that to our advantage so we've added these two number boxes to our presentation mode they're above that line so they will be in our visible display and we're going to just save the patch and you'll see yep it's now showing only what was in the presentation mode which is those two number boxes but nothing with our code has been affected so i can still type and it's still going to play the melodies and the notes and we are now seeing it's this MIDI note, this frequency. Which is pretty cool. And again, there's just, there's so much stuff we can add and continue to do with Max for Live. There's also all these awesome live objects, which are the Ableton equivalent of these Max objects. And some of them are very, very important for interfacing with the rest of Max for Live and Ableton in general, um, such as like live.path, liveparam, live.remote. Um, more, we'll talk about those eventually, but to get started, this is basically all you need to know. Um, and let's just patch our audio signal into that. And we'll add this into presentation mode and put that right there next to our number boxes. Save. And now when we play some stuff, we can see the audio signal coming through as well. And now that we have our patch complete, ready to go, everything we want in there, the last thing you need to know is you can record just like anything in Ableton. You just hit this record button, start playing your notes and the recording. And you could see it recorded the MIDI notes I played and it's running it through just like you would expect anything else to work in Ableton. And that's honestly beautiful that is so handy so nice that you can just so easily record just like that and that is our max for live patch if you guys found this video helpful please remember to like and subscribe because that is the best way to let me know that you guys found this video helpful uh if there's anything you're confused about any questions that you may still have over something i've covered in this video please feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I will answer them when I can. If you guys did like this video, please especially let me know because I would love to do more topic tutorial videos on Max for Live and get into some of the, the meatier stuff. But this is just a quick introduction going over which template to use, how it works, how to open up the window and get started patching and the importance of presentation mode so you can correctly display what you want to display. Hopefully this, you know, dipping our toes into Max for Live gets you excited to learn more and you see the potential and value in this. And with that, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.